The better way involves using the concept of a safety envelope. A safety envelope can be explained using the following sequence of ideas. First, sketch a picture of the operational state space of your system in terms of where it is safe and where it is unsafe. As a two-dimensional example, consider one state as vehicle speed and the other state as turning radius. Safe for this situation means that there is no chance of a vehicle rollover, and unsafe means the vehicle is likely to roll over at a particular combination of speed and turning radius. In general, real systems have a great many number of states, but it is common for each hazard to involve just one or two or a few of those states rather than all of them. So you end up drawing a separate safety envelope for each hazard that's relevant to your system. This picture is a concrete representation of what safe means for your system. If you're in the green, you're safe. And if you're in the red, you're unsafe. However, as you can see from this example, the boundary between safe and unsafe might be irregular and, in fact, might not be clearly known at any particular point. In other words, the boundary can be complicated and sometimes a bit fuzzy. The next step is to under-approximate the safe region. By this, what I mean is, pick a subset of the state space to declare as safe and draw as simple a bounding box around it as you can. Keep in mind when you're drawing this, what you're really doing is creating a rule set for deciding what's safe and what's unsafe. So simple isn't necessarily the picture, but rather simple rules that allow you to draw a shape around the safe space that is easy to understand and monitor. Then you declare that anything outside the bounding box is presumed to be unsafe, even if in some cases that might be pessimistic. This results in an over-approximation of the unsafe region as shown. In other words, we've drawn a simplified version of the diagram that still makes sure that when you think it's safe, it's really safe, but it makes it easy to understand the boundary between safe and presumed unsafe. Then, you can design your system so that it triggers a system safety shutdown fail-safe, or other safing response whenever you see a transition into the unsafe region. There are assumptions, such as that the fail-safe can respond in time to prevent significant harm, even though you've momentarily entered the unsafe region. But in real systems, generally this works out due to natural time constants of the system, or by adding a little extra margin to trip just before you enter the unsafe state space region. Once you take this view of the system, you can then partition the requirements. The operational requirements talk about what happens in the safe portion of the region, the green region. In general, optimization of behavior is all about what happens in the green region, and those requirements tend to be more complex. Safety usually doesn't have much to do with what happens in the green region. Rather, safety cares about not doing something unsafe, in other words, keeping out of the red region. That means you can have a completely separate set of requirements that are all about detecting being in the red region and doing some safing action to your system to keep it safe if that should happen. Those requirements generally correspond to the notion of a safety function as defined by functional safety standards. Now let's park this idea on the side for a moment and take a look at the architecture that is well suited to this sort of approach. And then in the following slide, we'll combine the two ideas.